it's interesting that if somebody came up to our door, it's very likely they're going to knock on the door before they just come right in. I mean, we're not going to have a sign on our door that says, please come on in and then tell us who you are. It's going to be the other way around. We want to know who that person is before we're going to let them in. Well, on our networks, we can take the same approach of finding out who individuals are before even giving them access into the network. And it can be implemented with a technique called 802.1x. And this can be applied to physical environments with Ethernet switches. And we can also apply the same kind of technique for wireless access into our networks. And the basic concept is this. When Bob is connected to the network, instead of just giving him access to everything, we can have the switch acting as an authenticator. Think of authenticator as a challenger, the entity that's asking for credentials. And so Bob over here on his computer would have a supplicant, which is a piece of software that can interoperate and work with the authenticator. So when Bob connects, the authenticator working in conjunction with a AAA server, for example, this could be a RADIUS server, are going to request Bob to authenticate. And as part of the authentication, Bob may have just a username and password, or if we're doing multi-factor or two-factor authentication, we could be requiring multiple things from Bob to verify it's really Bob. In the case of multi-factor authentication, maybe Bob has been given a smart card, and on that card there's a chip, and on that chip there's an individual certificate for Bob. That would be an example of something that Bob has. He has both the card and the certificate. So if there's a card reader that's attached to this computer, when he logs on, he can supply his username, the password, which is something he knows, and also the certificate being read in the card reader as something he has. And if that all checks out, the authentication server gives the message back. Great, let him in. And then Bob has successfully made it past the switch, and he's now on the network. And this type of technology can be extended further with solutions including NAC, Network Access Control, where the client, Bob in this case and his computer, are not only required to authenticate, but we can also profile that computer or that device to make sure it's compliant and secure enough to even connect to our network. Or based on who that individual is, once we authenticate them, we might have access control lists that are dynamically placed just for that specific user that control what he's allowed to access as he's communicating over the network. And 802.1x can be used in combination with other functions and features. For example, if we're looking at our logs and we see that there's specific MAC addresses that have been trying to get in or access our network, we could set up MAC filtering that would prevent specific MAC addresses from getting access into the network. And we could do that on wired networks. We could also do it on the wireless. And the concept that's presented by 802.1x regarding stopping an individual and validating them before we let them continue is a great concept to help us enforce security and access control. And another common example that we're going to see in hotels and coffee shops is the concept of a captive portal. And it's generally done with wireless. So a user connects to the access point, And then before they're allowed to get their traffic out to the internet or out to other networks, they have a pop-up that comes up that forces them to either identify themselves or agree to terms before they're allowed to continue. So that stopping point before we allow them to continue would be an example of a captive portal. And if the user doesn't agree to the terms or can't supply the information required, we simply stop the user at that captive portal and don't let them continue anywhere past that. In this nugget, we've taken a look at some additional access control methods, including MAC address filtering, 802.1x, and captive portal. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.